you'll hear me use the word abstract a lot. So I thought I would actually give you an attempt at, an, at a definition, or maybe more, even more important, an intuition of what abstract means. An abstract, it can be an adjective. You can have an abstract idea. You can, you can have abstract art. Or it can be a verb. You can abstract something, abstract the idea from some other idea. And you can even have it as a noun. You can have an abstract. And it tends to, when you use it as a noun, the one that I tend to associate is the abstract of a research paper, which is kind of distills the essence of the research paper. It's kind of a summary of that paper. And the one thing you're going to see, regardless of how you, what context you, you use the word abstract, there's this kind of notion of taking the essence of a real world, of, 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 a, of a real world object, whether you use it as a noun, an adjective, or a verb. So over here we have our real world. We have our real world. And then over here you have your world of, you have ideas, ideas, and concepts. And the general idea behind abstraction or abstracting something is you're taking it away from the particular concrete real world and you're going more in the direction of ideas and concepts. And probably for me, one of the, the, the most tangible ways of thinking about abstraction, which is kind of a, a, you know, a contradiction in itself to think of abstraction in a tangible way, is things, is things like geometric shapes. So if we were if I were to so if I were to tell you find me some cubes you might point to a borg vessel right over there a borg vessel you might point to you might point to maybe a pair of dice so let me draw the pair of dice if you are looking for cubes so you might point to a pair of dice that looks something like that you might point to a rubik's cube anything that you could find there might be a building that looks like a cube there might be a building that looks like a cube. Or maybe there's a box in your house that is a cube. But in your mind, you have a general idea of what a cube is. You're like, well, I know a cube when I see one. And that general idea is essentially distilling the, the concept, the idea of what a cube is. All of these things are very different. This is some plastic thing that I can hold in my hand. These are these little white things. And they're not even you know, geometrically even close to being perfect. They have these little divots on the side right over there. This is a large Borg vessel that you know it, it, it's, it doesn't even exist yet. It's not, you know, obviously, it's a fictional thing. But they, they all have this cube cubeness to them. And this is one of the fun things of geometry is to really distill the essence of these, these, these real world shapes. And we do have a definition in geometry, which is an object like this. You, I guess you could have an object like this, where every side has the exact same length. So this, if this is length 1, then that would be length 1, that is length 1. But it doesn't have to be. Whatever the length this side is in this dimension, then in this dimension it's going to be that length, and in that dimension it's going to be in that length. And I'm not giving you the rigorous geometric definition, but I'm just trying to highlight that there is a pure idea of what a cube is of what a cube is. And in the real world, there is nothing that is actually a perfect cube. If you were to get really, really close to these die, if you were to really try to measure exactly their measurements, they won't be exactly the same measurement. But in it, the, the, the abstract idea of a cube, this is, is completely the same length as this and this, and actually this, and all of the edges are going to have the exact same length. So this is going from the concrete, the specific, from the real world, if you consider the 24th or 25th century the real world, to going to, going to the idea behind it, the general idea. And you've probably also heard the word abstract in terms of art, like abstract art. So this is abstract art. And it's the same general idea. If you look it up on a dictionary, you're going to find 20 definitions of the word abstract. But it's all essentially trying to say the same thing. Abstract art is art that is not focused on trying to paint reality the exact way that reality exists. If you look at kind of a lot of uh, you know, Renaissance art, they're skilled at painting figures exactly how they look in the real world. But the abstract artists, sometimes they're, they're not even trying to even represent anything that's in the real world. They're trying to represent a raw idea, or they're trying to represent a raw expression of color and form and texture. And this is a Jackson Pollock painting right over here. And I pronounced many, many things wrong. This was taken by our own Stephen Zucker. Art, art historian. And as you can see, it's not clear. Jackson Pollock is not trying to paint a, you know, a, a, a dog or a horse or anything like that. He is painting something that is devoid. It's completely independent of anything that we actually uh, see in physical reality. 
And the word abstraction, you know, I'm, you know, it doesn't just apply to, you know, pure ge geometry and art. It applies to almost everything that we do on a daily basis. When we even talk about things, when we even use words or use symbols, we're essentially abstracting away. We're abstracting the essence of of something that actually exists in physical reality. So if I use the word if I use the word dog, it's a set of symbols. The set of symbols represent something in our minds that we associate with dog. We have in our minds kind of the qualities of what a dog actually is, you know, it has it has four legs and floppy ears and you enjoy petting it and they're their man's or I guess people's best friend. You imagine this thing called a dog and and it has the essence of dogness, even though when you actually look at dogs in the real world, they look very, very, very different types of animals. Whether you're looking at a Great Dane or a or a, a, a or a kind of a, a super small poodle, but we we recognize there's an essence of those particulars that we can abstract away and say this is a dog, and then we abstract it even more by representing these letter symbols that tend to conjure up this image. Even when we write something as simple as a number, so if I write if I write the number five. We use it so frequently that we just, to us, a number five seems kind of like a concrete thing, but it's so abstract. It's just a quantity, a quantity of things. I could have symbolized it like that. I could have symbolized five like that. I could have symbolized five in Roman numerals like that. I can symbolize it like that. And in all of these cases, they are, it's the idea of a quantity of five things. Five, you know, if, if we were, you know, you could say point me to a five, someone would probably draw point you to something like that, but they're still pointing you to the symbol of, of five. But it's still a very, very abstract idea. So hopefully this gives you an appreciation for what abstract means. As you can tell, you know, it, it's it's kind of a for lack of a better word, it's kind of a an abstract idea. Not to make be too cute about that.